get that blue one, it's 12-2. Might be a Guinness Book of World Record. It might be a Guinness Book of World Record. He jumped so high I developed a southern accent. All right, let's start from the top. So this is his first attempt. Oh, shit. Runs through it. He gets 12 on his first attempt. I mean, look at, look how surprised I am. Hey, you get him off? Couldn't even dap up my bro because of the corona. Yeah. So that's how you feel. Let's raise you up. All right, so as a lot of you guys know, 12 foot is the top of the vertex. It doesn't go any higher. And so we had to elevate it up on a six inch box. So now whatever he gets on that vertex, we're adding in six inches. Uh... All right, next attempt, he missed it. And I'm starting to think that he's maxed out. Let's go, Jay, get up. Ah! Stay loose, visualize it. So it's right around 12 foot one right now. Get that blue one, it's 12 two. Hey, you got the white though. You got the white. So he did get the white. You can't really see it in the video, but he felt it, I heard it. So that white got him a half inch. He's gotta get that blue for 12 two. So not only did he get the blue, I truly believe that he got the white. That gives him 12, two and a half. You could make the argument that he didn't get the white. That's still a true 12, two, but I calculated 12, two and a half because the white did move a little bit. You can't see from this camera angle. So it's either 12, two or 12, two and a half. That's crazy. You're at 45 last night. Right. 45 to 52. So quick note on the test, we're not using the NBA protocol where you're limited to a 15 foot approach. I let them choose the angle they come from and I like to go unlimited approach. That's how all pro dunkers actually test. Um, 15 foot approach really makes no sense to me because then the one foot jumper is at a major disadvantage because they rely more on momentum than a two foot jumper. So a guy like Zach Levine, I believe his combine was a 41 inch jump. And then he goes to like a Lakers workout where they give you the same protocol that I'm using, unlimited approach, and now he's got a 46. So that 15 foot limitation just ruins data because if you're a one foot jumper, you're kind of in trouble. And so consistent with how all pro dunkers test, we test from an unlimited approach and the angle is up to them. I use the same protocol every time. So what we're looking for is scapular elevation. So I make them lean. I want elbow extension. I believe that this was a true reach and he was not packing his shoulder. Now I sat in the car afterwards and I sat there like something's wrong. Something is definitely wrong. There's no way he got it because remember last time he was a 45 with me. So I look back at his reach from the previous time, the same exact reach. So if he was packing his shoulder down, he's the world's most consistent at doing that because it's really tough to cheat consistently and not have any variance of even half an inch. Now you could say that we have to be strict to the point where we tug on his arm and pull it up, or I've heard another protocol pull down the opposite arm. Uh, I've heard of people pulling down one arm, pulling up this arm, but I've also seen professional facilities go completely flat, right? We know that's completely wrong. For me, I'm just looking at the basic checkpoints. I'm, I wanna make sure that you're standing up nice and tall. I wanna make sure that this isn't outside of your hip because if you reach out here, it's obviously lower than if this arm is in line with that hip. I wanna make sure that we are leaning and we have scapular elevation and I wanna make sure that we have elbow extension. Jamal hit all three of those key points for my protocol. Now, there's a million different ways to test it. If you look at combines from high school to college to pro, all of them are done different, unfortunately. If you look at volleyball, 
to football to basketball. The reach is measured different in all sports. So there is no one standard way. Uh, he touched 94.5 on his standing reach. And I believe he's around 6'2 in shoes. But again, height does not matter. You can't look at your height and compare to somebody else because what really matters is how long your arms are. So I went back in the gym to test myself and I'm like, where am I at right now on this Vertec? I reach as hard as I possibly can, full tilt, full scapular elevation, and I touch 89 inches. I'm 5'11". So Jamal's three inches taller than me and he's touching 5.5 inches higher than me. So it seems legit, like I think his wingspan would probably have to be even. I think he'd probably have to have a 6'2", or maybe even a negative, maybe a 6'1", wingspan. Uh, but even under NBA standards, you get some stuff that just doesn't make sense. I've had guys come back from pre-draft and say that the coach lead pulled the arm out of the socket reaching for it. Um, but you still get guys like Pat Connaughton, 6'5 in shoes. So we're talking three inches taller than Jamal. A 6'8 wingspan. Jamal is nowhere near a 6'8 wingspan. And he still touches 96 inches. That's only 1.5 inches higher than Jamal. Someone like Ron Baker, he's 6'4 in shoes, so we're talking two inches taller. He has a 6'10 wingspan. So again, these NBA players, we're talking about freak length. And he reaches a 97.5, so he's three inches higher than Jamal. You would think that he would be way above where Jamal is at. So even under the most strict testing protocols, you still see guys height in their wingspan, and it seems like their, their reach is a lot lower. Every year in the combine, you get those cases. And again, that's why I say, Vertec testing is not actually the most accurate. Uh, there's so many factors that go into it. If we're about accuracy, we shouldn't even be dealing with the Vertec. We should be moving towards motion tracking and force plate. So you actually can't measure with your heel on the ground because we take off from this. So all of this space boosts your vertical. So your foot length and even your ability to plant our flex all affects your vertical jump and this all throws off our numbers. So if we really wanna get accurate, we shouldn't even be doing a Vertec test. So then we get into this bigger conversation. What are we after? Are we after consistency with history so that we can compare and preserve this valuable data that we've had for the last 30, 40, 50 years? Because you cannot compare the two methods. I was talking with a NBA a director of performance the other day, and he was like, look, NBA teams have access to all the best ways of measurement from body fat to vertical jump testing, et cetera. But a lot of teams actually still use older methods of testing because they might have 40 years of data. And so if you make that switch, then you're throwing away a huge database and the bigger that database, the more confident our decisions on the actual training intervention. For us, we try to do both. We do force plate, motion capture, and a Vertec test. The Vertec test is not for accuracy. It's just so that we can compare to previous athletes and compare to NBA combine and compare to what other pro dunkers are testing with because most pro dunkers aren't getting a full-on motion capture assessment. All right, that's enough context on testing in general. Let's get back to the topic. And you can look back to this clip with Jamal. This is about six months ago where he tested a 45. You could see how much he had left. And this is not boosted on a box. This is on the ground. So he's significantly shorter than 12 feet. We calculated his vertical to 45. And again, this is with the same exact standing reach that he has now. So his standing reach did not change. And obviously now you can clearly see the improvement. He got through 12 feet right away. Now, is it really a Guinness Book World Record? No, because there's one tester. There could potentially be equipment error. Uh, anytime a human is running a test, there could be human error. I do the same test, same protocol. I ran three of them that day on that same Vertec, and I didn't have any numbers that jumped out to me. I didn't have anything that looked crazy. Um, I've never had big mistakes before, but I'm willing to admit any human can make a mistake. To the best of my knowledge, this was a true 52 inch vertical jump. 50s are like aliens. We hear about it, we watch documentaries on it. We just don't actually see it. And so I've never seen somebody film a legit 50 inch vertical on a Vertec. But again, to confirm, we're gonna have to test again. Now, grand scheme, does any of this matter compared to the pandemic we're in? No, but I just wanna provide you guys some entertainment. Hopefully I can get your mind off checking the news every five minutes. Stay up, my guys. Take care of your mental health. Take care of your physical health. 
control what you can control, and that's your positivity, that's your health. Stop spreading the hate. Until next time, I'm out.